As we dive deeper into the tumultuous waters of history, our journey through the echoes of World War II continues. In part one, we traverse the landscape of pre-1939. Now, with the stage set, it's time to turn our attention to the harrowing events that unfolded after that pivotal year. Join me as we explore the relentless battles, invasions, and the unforgiving crucible of war that defined the course of history after 1939. So, buckle up, history enthusiasts, because in part two, we embark on a riveting journey through the battlefields. Are you ready to step into the annals of history once again? Let's dive in. The Gathering Storm In 1938, the dark clouds of war gathered ominously on the horizon. Germany's annexation of Austria, Anschluss, and the Sudetenland had intensified fears, but the world had not yet witnessed the full force of Hitler's expansionist agenda. As the stress affront crumbled, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact emerged in August 1939, a non-aggression agreement between Germany and the Soviet Union. With this pact, Hitler secured his eastern flank, clearing the way for further aggression. Poland stood as the first target. In September 1939, Hitler's forces launched a lightning-fast invasion, employing blitzkrieg tactics. The Polish resistance was valiant but ultimately overwhelmed. As German troops marched into Warsaw, the curtain rose on World War II, and the global stage was engulfed in chaos. Invasion of Poland, 1939 The invasion of Poland marked the beginning of World War II in Europe. On September 1, 1939, Germany, led by Hitler, launched a full-scale invasion using blitzkrieg tactics, combining rapid infantry movements, air raids, and coordinated strikes. The Polish military, though valiant, couldn't withstand the overwhelming German force. The world watched in horror as Warsaw fell on September 27, 1939. The Soviet Union, adhering to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, invaded Poland from the east on September 17. This dual attack crushed Poland's resistance, leading to its division between Germany and the Soviet Union. The swift conquest of Poland stunned the international community. The United Kingdom and France, bound by treaties to defend Poland, declared war on Germany on September 3, 1939. The die was cast, and the world plunged into a global conflict that would shape the course of history. Expanding fronts with Poland subdued, Hitler turned his attention to the West. In April 1940, German forces invaded Denmark and Norway, securing vital sea routes and resources. The Low Countries, Belgium, the Netherlands and Luxembourg, soon faced the brunt of the German onslaught. Blitzkrieg tactics, characterized by swift and coordinated attacks, led to the fall of these nations in May 1940. The British Expeditionary Force, along with French and Belgian troops, attempted to stem the German advance. However, the evacuation of Dunkirk in June 1940 marked a narrow escape for Allied forces. The German blitzkrieg tactics had proven devastatingly effective, leaving a trail of conquered nations in their wake. While the Axis powers celebrated their victories, the Allies faced a sobering reality. The fall of France in June 1940 marked a turning point as German forces occupied Paris. The stage was set for a prolonged and grueling conflict. Global Dimensions As Europe became a battleground, global alliances were reshaped. Germany, Italy, and Japan formalized their partnership with the signing of the Tripartite Pact in September 1940. The pact solidified the Axis powers, forming a military alliance against the Allies. Japan, pursuing its imperialistic ambitions, expanded its influence in Asia. In 1937, the Marco Polo Bridge incident marked the beginning of the Second Sino-Japanese War. Japan's relentless aggression led to the occupation of key territories in China and Southeast Asia. The world watched as Japan's expansionist agenda threatened regional stability. Pacific Theater While Europe grappled with the upheaval of war, the Pacific Theater witnessed its own unfolding drama. Japan, hungry for resources and dominance, pursued an aggressive campaign. The invasion of China was followed by moves into Southeast Asia. In December 1941, Japan delivered a devastating blow to the United States. 
launching a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. The attack on Pearl Harbor brought the United States into the war. President Franklin D. Roosevelt declared it a date which will live in infamy. The Pacific Theater, once a regional conflict, now became a focal point of the global struggle. World War II had expanded its reach and the Allies faced the challenge of combating Axis forces on multiple fronts. Declaration by United Nations As the war entered a new phase, the Allies strengthened their resolve. In January 1942, representatives from 26 Allied nations met in Washington, D.C. to sign the Declaration by United Nations. This declaration solidified their commitment to a collective effort against the Axis powers. The Allies set forth their principles and pledged not to seek a separate peace with the enemy. The Washington Conference also addressed strategic priorities. The Allies recognized the need to focus on the defeat of Nazi Germany before turning full attention to Japan. This decision shaped the course of the war in the coming years. Pacific Theater Shifts In the Pacific Theater, the tide began to turn against Japan. The Battle of Midway in June 1942 proved to be a decisive naval engagement. The United States, having cracked Japanese codes, anticipated the attack and inflicted a crippling blow on the Japanese fleet. Midway marked a turning point, halting Japan's advance in the Pacific. Simultaneously, in the jungles of Guadalcanal, the United States and its allies engaged in a fierce struggle against Japanese forces. The Battle of Guadalcanal, fought from August 1942 to February 1943, saw Allied forces gaining a foothold in the Solomon Islands. These victories shifted the balance of power in the Pacific and set the stage for further Allied advances. Eastern Front and Global Offensives On the Eastern Front, the conflict between Germany and the Soviet Union reached a critical juncture. Operation Barbarossa, launched by Germany in June 1941, aimed to crush the Soviet Union. Initially successful, German forces advanced deep into Soviet territory. However, the brutal Russian winter and determined Soviet resistance halted the German advance. As the Eastern Front became a battleground of attrition, global offensives unfolded on other fronts. In North Africa, the Allies, led by General Bernard Montgomery, secured victories against German and Italian forces. The Battle of El Alamein in October 1942 marked a turning point, forcing Axis forces to retreat. Strategic Shifts By 1943, the Allies had gained momentum on multiple fronts. In the Pacific, they continued to push back Japanese forces, reclaiming territories. In the Mediterranean, Allied forces launched successful campaigns, including the invasion of Sicily in July 1943. The combined efforts of the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union were reshaping the course of the war. The Tehran Conference held in November 1943 brought together the leaders of the United States, the Soviet Union, and the United Kingdom. Franklin D. Roosevelt, Joseph Stalin, and Winston Churchill convened to discuss coordinated military strategies and post-war plans. The conference solidified the commitment to the opening of a second front in Western Europe to relieve Soviet pressure on the Eastern Front. The Italian Campaign In 1943, the Allies launched the Italian Campaign, an amphibious invasion of Italy. The invasion began with the capture of Sicily in July, followed by the mainland invasion in September. While progress was slow and challenging, the Allies managed to break through the German defensive lines at Monte Cassino in May 1944. Rome was liberated on June 4, 1944 marking a significant victory. D-Day and the Western Front The turning point in the European theater came with the Normandy landings, codenamed Operation Overlord, on June 6, 1944, D-Day. Allied forces, under the command of General Dwight D. Eisenhower, stormed the beaches of Normandy in the largest amphibious assault in history. This marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany's occupation of Western Europe, the successful establishment of a Western Front provided a much-needed second front for the Soviet Union, as agreed upon during the Tehran Conference. The Allies pushed eastward, liberating Paris in August 1944. As the Western Allies advanced and the Soviet Red Army pushed from the east, Germany found itself caught in a vice. 
Eastern Front, and the Soviet advance. On the Eastern Front, the Soviet Union launched a series of offensives that pushed German forces back. The Battle of Stalingrad, a brutal and pivotal confrontation, concluded in February 1943 with a decisive Soviet victory. This marked a turning point, leading to a series of Soviet offensives that gradually pushed German forces out of Soviet territory. Pacific Theater and Island Hopping In the Pacific, the Allies continued their strategy of island hopping. U.S. forces, led by General Douglas MacArthur and Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, bypassed heavily fortified Japanese-held islands and targeted strategically important ones. The Battle of Leyte Gulf in October 1944 was a significant naval confrontation, resulting in a decisive Allied victory. Closing in on Japan By 1945, the Allies had closed in on Japan. The Battle of Iwo Jima in February and the Battle of Okinawa from April to June were fierce encounters bringing the Allies closer to the Japanese home islands. However, the cost in lives was high, and the intense resistance from Japanese forces foreshadowed the challenges of a potential invasion of mainland Japan. The Manhattan Project and the Atomic Bomb The development of the atomic bomb under the Manhattan Project added a new dimension to the war. In July 1945, the first successful test of an atomic bomb took place in New Mexico. With this powerful new weapon in their arsenal, the Allies faced a crucial decision. In August 1945, the United States dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The devastation and the realization of the destructive power of nuclear weapons prompted Japan to surrender on August 15, 1945, bringing an end to World War II. Post-War Reconstruction and the United Nations The end of World War II marked the beginning of a complex and challenging period of post-war reconstruction. The world sought to rebuild from the ruins of conflict and address the profound social, economic and political transformations brought about by the war. In 1945, representatives from 50 nations gathered in San Francisco to establish the United Nations UN, an international organization aimed at promoting peace and cooperation. The UN Charter was signed on June 26, 1945, and the organization officially came into existence on October 24, 1945. The UN became a forum for diplomatic dialogue and conflict resolution. Nuremberg Trials and War Crimes The Allies held the Nuremberg Trials from November 20, 1945, to October 1, 1946 to prosecute major war criminals for their roles in the Holocaust and other war crimes. Leaders of the Third Reich, including Hermann Goering and Rudolf Hess, faced charges of crimes against peace, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. The trials set important precedents for prosecuting individuals for actions committed during armed conflict. Occupation of Germany and Japan After the war, Germany and Japan were occupied by Allied forces. In Germany, the country was divided into four zones, each controlled by the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and the Soviet Union. In Japan, the U.S. led the occupation, implementing significant political, economic, and social reforms. Cold War and the Division of Europe The end of World War II marked the beginning of the Cold War a geopolitical and ideological struggle between the United States and its Western allies and the Soviet Union and its Eastern Bloc. The division of Germany into East and West, along with the Iron Curtain dividing Eastern and Western Europe, symbolized the ideological and political rift. Decolonization and Nationalist Movements The post-war era witnessed a wave of decolonization as former colonies in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East sought independence. Nationalist movements and leaders, including Mahatma Gandhi in India and Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, played crucial roles in shaping the post-colonial world. The Marshall Plan and Economic Recovery To facilitate the economic recovery of war-torn Europe, the United States initiated the Marshall Plan in 1948. This massive aid program provided financial assistance to European countries to rebuild infrastructure, 
stimulate economic growth, and prevent the spread of communism. The Beginnings of the Cold War Tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union escalated during the post-war years. The Truman Doctrine, announced in 1947, committed the U.S. to support nations resisting communist aggression. The Marshall Plan and the formation of NATO in 1949 further solidified the Western Bloc. Conclusion. World War II, with its vast destruction and far-reaching consequences, reshaped the global order. The aftermath of the war laid the foundation for the second half of the 20th century, characterized by the Cold War, decolonization, and the emergence of new geopolitical realities. As nations grappled with the challenges of reconstruction and facied the complexities of the post-war world, the lessons learned from the war continued to shape international relations and diplomacy in the decades to come. The echoes of World War II reverberated through history, reminding the world of the enduring importance of peace, cooperation, and the pursuit of a better future.